Hello, everybody. This is AGDQ Awesome Games Done Quick 2016. We are coming up to our Shovel Knight section, which, as we all know, involves shovels and knights. I don't know. I don't know. I love this game. So, remember, we have some pretty big taskbar incentives that we need met by the end of Shovel Knight. That means pull out your wallets, pull out your money, throw it at the screen, pick it back up, and then just, you know, use, use PayPal or something. Uh, go ahead. We really want to see these incentives met. Let me go ahead and take a look at what we've got. Uh, Okay, we're going to go ahead and go to the interview screen real quick, show off a few of these prizes. Uh, so take a look at your screen right now and just be marveled at what we have here. All right. Are we on? Okay, I figured I'd check this time before I just started yelling. All right. Good call, Spike. Good call. What's up, guys? I'm Spike Vachita, and we are once again joined by Scent. I uh, just want to give a quick shout-out to everyone involved in the PlayStation block. Very successful block this year. But we still have a lot left to go in the marathon, and we still have a long way to go to a million dollars. But you guys can make that happen. Scent, what are some incentives we can give them to make that happen? Oh, we, we've got some great stuff here, Spike. Let, right. me, let me show you. So first up, we have this lovely uh, watercolor painting of Reaper Knight from Shovel Knight. Spectre Knight. Spectre Knight. Spectre Knight, Spectre Knight. Knight. Reaper. He he's look, a, I mean, he's, he's basically a Reaper. Reaper. Yeah, 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 he's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all good. Uh, it's sent to us by uh, Nathan and Connie Call. Uh, it's a beautiful watercolor painting. Yeah, same who and made done. the, the oh, yeah, same Skull Kid. Did the yeah. Skull Kid and the uh, Super Mario 64 Monkey. They, yeah, they do wonderful looking. work. Always love having them. But uh, what I'm, I'm really happy to talk about is Yacht Club Games actually got in touch with us producers of Shovel Knight, and they sent us some really cool merch uh, that we've made some kind of prize packs for. And uh, every prize pack comes with Shovel Knight the t-shirt, Shovel Knight the soundtrack, Yo, Shovel Knight the what? shovel, <laughs> <laughs> Shovel Knight the flamethrower. No. <laughs> okay, okay, we don't, we don't have to Shovel Knight the flamethrower, maybe next time. <laughs> But, can, I, but, can, I, can I hold it? <laughs> sure, sure thing, Spike. All right. But, but for real, um, a huge shout-out to Yacht Club Games for sending us some option merch. Every prize pack comes with a T-shirt in one of three different designs, and we have sizes ranging from small to extra large. So whether uh, you might be a little bit evil at heart here, uh, or if dancing just happens to be Yo, kind of your thing. there's the winner right there. We definitely have a shirt for you. Um, we have copies of the soundtrack as well as these foam shovels. Um, mm -hmm. Copies of the soundtrack and the shovels are actually signed and drawn on by the art team of Shovel Knight. Oh so, my gosh. Uh, they, are, they are definitely very special. Really <laughs> excited for this. And then in addition to all of that, it doesn't stop there. They also sent us these wonderful Shovel Knight plushies. Uh, you know, he's plush, he's got a shovel, he's ready to go, I don't know, beat up some plush squids. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's what we're looking yeah. at for uh, Shovel Knight Block. Um, I'd like for to the, yeah, go, uh, about, uh, go sure, ahead. Yeah, sure thing. I I'd just like to remind everyone that all of your donations go directly to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Every little bit helps. And if you guys were curious at all of some of the cool prizes you might be able to win by donating, or some of the great incentives you could put your uh, donations towards, you can always go over to GamesDoneQuick.com, where you'll find all of that information and more. Guys, we've seen it the last two years. We've seen the late push to a million dollars in 2014 and 2015. You guys can do it. You guys have the power. And we've got prizes for you right here. So make sure you get in your donations. Let's go ahead and kick it over for the Shovel Knight Plague Knight New Game Plus race. Fantastic. Thank you very much for showing off those prizes, some of the great incentives that we have coming up. Remember, Taskbot needs your help. Taskbot is crying over here in the corner because he thinks he won't be able to play Brain Age, okay? We need $8,000 by the end of Shovel Knight towards Taskbot Blaze Brain Age in order to see this. And apparently this is going to be amazing. Ah, it's Twitch helps Taskbot play Brain Age. Aha! 
you know, that's even better. So if y'all want to give Taskbot a hand and help him play Brain Age, please get those donations in because this is going to be absolutely amazing. Twitch chat. Oh, jeez. I'm just imagining how awesome this is going to be. <laughs> oh. So a few more donations. $100 from Seriously says, thank you guys for this awesome event. I had to donate for Spyro the Dragon. Best game of my childhood. And kill the animals. Oh, boy. King Avaricious gave $10 and said, had to donate during my favorite game of all time. This donation is in honor of my friends, Dust Girl, Vexy Puff, and Ashers, who have all lost beloved family members to cancer. Let's kick this thing for good. P.S. Rad shirt, Chris. And it's good to see Nitrovsky here. We have $100 from Ashelv, who said, just realized I'll be at work when the Super Metroid run starts, so donating now to get it in before the cutoff. This is my fourth GDQ I've watched and donated to, and in keeping with my pattern, a GDQ always goes to save the animals. Got to help that $20,000 deficit at the time of this donation. Ouch. Oh, boy. That's right. That is very far behind right now. If you want to save the animals, get that money in as well. Silvert, or Sivert gave $10 and said, the Taskbot needs our help. And indeed he does. Mikey McMuffin gave $50 and said, much hype for two of my favorite games back to back, Spyro and Shovel Knight. Putting this towards Twitch helps play and Shovel Knight gold armor for swag. We have $20 from Anonymous who says, save the dragons, dragons are animals, right? Indeed they are. 2NA gave $50 and said, second year watching AGDQ, first donation. Today it's my birthday, and watching the Spyro run makes it me feel so nostalgic. This was my first PlayStation game, and my birthday gift so many years ago. Time flies. Keep going saving the dragons and save the animals. We have $63 from Boss Killer, who says our children Ace and Ness have donated their allowance, and we're matching their donation. Thank you, for all, uh, thank you all for using your time and talents to help others strike the earth. Tom Barry gave $10 and said, Hi, guys, from France. Once again, a great time to be with y'all um, on our passion with awesome runners and awesome games. Thank you. We have Chris Steele, who gave $75 and said, super enjoyed the platformer's block. Keep it up, everyone. $15 from Andrew E., who said, Twitch wants to help. Oh, trust me. I know Twitch chat wants to help with Brain Age. Keep those donations coming in. Mr. That Never Happened Before gave $20 and said, hey, bro, sent ya. Great to hear your voice. Let's get this block started with a big woo-hoo. Woohoo! Okay, that's woohoo from me. Good. Big enough. Put this towards the incentive of your choice. Well, I am going to put mine towards Taskbot and Twitch because Twitch chat is most important. $15 from Halo Wildcat who said, I want that soundtrack. Robert P83 gave $42.34 and said, Today is great. A Taskbot sandwich with Shovel Knight and Bloodborne as the bread. We have $15 from Dread, who said, Strike the Earth for charity. Shoutouts to the best audio in a game. Moon's Pod gave $15 and said, For chivalry. We have $40 from Little Senshi, who said, Awesome event, and it's great watching the runners break our favorite games. Keep it up. We'll get the million. Be cancer, but save the animals. We have Dusk, who gave $50 and said, Long time watcher here. After work yesterday, I thought I would just stay up for the rest of the marathon, but then I checked the schedule, and it ends at midnight, not noon. But I'm awake now and have no plans to leave my screen until it's over from here. Donation goes to the trash can glitch in Final Fantasy IV, mostly because I have no idea what it is and would love to find out. Oh, boy, the trash can glitch is hard to pull off, but it's a pretty exciting thing during uh, the Mylon and Mylon Z fights. So, yeah, watch out for that. Indy gave $15 and said, hey, Chris and Spyro crew, it's Indy here. Good luck for the run. You can do it. And please kick some norks for me, Swagro. $50 from, an anon uh, ah, from Anonymous. Time for the annual donation to AGDQ again. Love you guys for all your hard work and for a great cause. Sad that the event will be over soon, but we'll be sure to tune in again for SGDQ. Finish it strong, and let's push for that million. 
We have $30 from Cronian, who said, thanks for the great spiral run, Chris. Kill the animals, obviously. Again, this is Awesome Games Done Quick 2016. This stream is powered by Twitch. We're super happy that Twitch has this platform for us and that we're able to have such an awesome place to be able to have this marathon. Ah, uh, good old days when we weren't on Twitch. Uh, this is a great place now. We absolutely love it. Mark A gave $100 and said, for chivalry. $334 from Anonymous, who said the previous donor might be up to something. We Germans need to think of something new. Greetings from Ankh Morp, or Morpork. Jeez, that name. Oh. I feel like that was an Animorphs reference, but I'm not completely sure. No, that was Hork. Hork is from Animorphs. Never mind. $500 from Anonymous. $700 from Anonymous. Who says, hey, chat, I hear these guys want to prevent you. If you're not here for next AGDQ, where is going to be my chat experience? Maybe you didn't play Brain Age enough. Put this towards TaskBot's Twitch Helps Play incentive. Oh, boy. We are starting to get close to beginning this race. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to them for now. Keep those donations coming in. We need to meet this donation incentive for Brain Age, and we're starting to get a little bit closer. Keep them coming in. Actually, as a quick update, we're $300 away, and we were like $8,000 like 10 minutes ago. So th <laughs> thank you guys for bringing those donations in. This is amazing. Super hype for Shovel Knight. Oh, cool. Hello? Do you have devs? Hello. Hello. Oh, there you guys are. What's up? Hey, guys? everyone. Awesome. Uh, do we have Please, what color play. armor we're using? Gold, I'm pretty sure. Gold? It was up like $600, so. <laughs> oh, yes. And the color of armor that we have here is, as soon as I can find it, it should be gold. Okay. Are we watching uh, Trial Pool before or after the run? Let's do it before. Okay, hang on. Yes, gold <laughs> won with $2,624. Dark Blue was in second with $1,693. So gold was very much in the lead. We'll do this in sync. Which button? X. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, wait. Do we have to do another hit? <laughs> yeah, start. This one. Wait, this one? Yeah. Are we synced? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Gets me every time. Did you guys practice your plague dance to go with it? Kind of. Maybe. <laughs> Don't judge me. So we are ready. Do you want to count us down, Taiwan? Um, let's get Tolu to yeah. count us down. Go. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one, go. Yeah! Woo! All right. So this is a Plague Knight New Game Plus. Uh, we use a very specific bomb loadout where we use the bounce casing, uh, we use impact fuse, where our bombs instantly blow up the very first time it hits something, and we use cluster bomb. 
And the uh, nice thing about New Game Plus is we have access to every relic at the very beginning of the game, so we're just going to basically fly through everything. Yeah, if you were, were to play this just a regular any percent, uh, you wouldn't pick up a lot of relics just because uh, everything that Plague Knight buys is actually incredibly expensive, oh. so you get very few items in the regular any percent. Uh, so Plague Knight has uh, his uh, main movement ability is uh, called Burst. So he can hold down the attack button and uh, propel himself in the air at uh, really fast uh, speeds. Um, he can actually, uh, which is what is really nice about bursting, is that he can actually do it pretty much at any time. Uh, even when uh, a stage is loading up, he can hold a, a burst. Uh, when there's a screen transition, he can charge a burst as well. It's a really cool uh, touch that, that that ability has. All right, and then coming up, we have our very first sequence break zip thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have another one where we're kind of in the ceiling. And then we're at the boss. So what they're gonna try to <laughs> what they're gonna try to, to do for this boss is that they're gonna try to throw a, a cluster bomb and then cycle cycle him with a snap of striking hit. There you go. Oh, a bunch of got the bad black knight. He jumped over my staff, and then a bomb didn't come out. <laughs> that was good, though. All right, so coming up, we have the village visit. And if anyone's played Shovel Knight, uh, Shovel Knight's welcome in the village. Plague Knight, not so much. Um, I'm going to be going for a glitch that allows me to be welcome in the village, and then Munch is just going to do it normally so you can see um, the difference. But the glitch is frame perfect, so if I miss it, I'm just going to continue on. It just blew up, blew up this guy's house. I got it. Nice. So this is Mido Skip. I kind of despawn him, and now I'm in the village. Nice. <laughs> Just so you know, we have met the task on it set. Oh. Thank you, thank you, uh -oh. everyone, for donating. This is bad. That. <laughs> All right, this is very bad. All right, second time's a charm. So when I actually leave. Uh, the screen, Mido actually respawns and catches me, and this is the only reason why this glitch actually loses a bit of time. But I'm actually on top of the village, off the screen, and I'm just gonna run off to the abyss. Luckily, there's no collision, and I can just clip right back in at the bottom, and then leave through the bottom. <laughs> That's crazy. Nice programming. <laughs> Um, next up, we have King Knight stage. It's really not a hard stage. Uh, there's some difficult tricks towards the end, but it's mostly just uh, maintaining your burst rhythm and going through as fast as possible. Nice. I got a frame, per uh, not frame perfect, but it's about a three frame gap to do that correctly. So on this stage, uh, you might see a lot of use. Uh, the item they're using right now is called uh, Fleet Flask. And this is an item that's really useful on this stage because um, this stage has really low ceiling, so basically, if you want to go as fast as possible as Plague Knight, you want to keep yourself in the air as much as possible. And it's a bit difficult to do that if you're just uh, bouncing, uh, bonking your head on the, on, the, on the ceilings. So with Fully Flask, you can pretty much move at the same uh, speed as Bursting, but uh, keep just yourself running at all times. There is something with the Fleet Flask. Every burst we do with Fleet Flask active because we're using basically Screw Attack. Oh, I missed it. Um, we actually lose three frames for every burst we have while active on Fleet Flask, but overall it's still faster. So coming up next is uh, King Knight. He's uh, probably the easiest boss in New Game Plus. You just kind of, uh, whenever he's on the ground, you just throw a bomb at him. And whenever he's in the air, you just hit him with uh, Staff of Striking. And it's, uh, when en whenever an enemy is taking damage, he actually goes through you. Uh, he can't actually hit you. And that's really useful to do on this boss. I just want to say I really like that smoke bomb usage in the uh, book room in the pouring cauldron room. For a brief while, you can see like a gray stuff of smoke appears. Yeah, so there's actually two relics that Plague Knight has that doesn't stop his forward momentum. That's the big bomb and the smoke screen. So what I do there is I throw a smoke screen and then use the invincibility frames that it gives you because it makes you invulnerable to go through the fire about two tenths of a second faster than normal. <laughs> Trying to save all the frames. Meanwhile, I go for Mona Skip and lose 10 seconds. <coughs> Handicap. <laughs> Handicap. 
We have $100 from Corey C, who said, Love Shovel Knight, best of luck in the run, and let's kill those animals. So this Fleet Flask here is actually kind of RNG, but we're fine. The, with that, we call that Frog Jeremiah, because he's not our friend, and he can really ruin that strat. But we go for it anyways, because it's really early on in the speed run, so we can just reset if something goes incredibly wrong. I don't know if that applies today. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> no promises. So we're going to use Smokescreen again here, just to get through this stupid skeleton, and then fleet the rest of the room. Yeah, the reason we don't use uh, Fleet uh, flea Flask uh, pretty much everywhere is that when you actually use Fleet Flask, it actually stops you uh, for a little bit. So you actually don't like want to really use it all the time. There's a couple of spots where, um, like, it might seem like it saves a lot of time, but like every time they use it, they probably save at most like two seconds. So Spectre Knight has a lot of uh, these sort of dark rooms, but um, it's, it's not really a big deal for our, for our runners because they already know the, the room layout and it's uh, pretty easy for them. All right, Spectre Knight, they want to burst up to him and they want to keep him in the right corner with a bomb and then uh, Staff is striking. Nice. Nice. Once I got it, really good. And then bounce him back at the corner right, right here. Oh, yeah. he was mean to me. You still got it. Still... Nice. Nice. I got a decent kill too. So ideally we want him to stay on the right side of the screen because we waste frames for him to go to the left side, but a quick kill on this boss is actually just kind of a godsend because he can really ruin uh, your life in a speedrun. Uh, he's probably the most reset heavy boss aside from the stage explodatorium, which we're coming up to next. Uh, it's the hardest stage in the game. So we're probably going to be quiet and let Tolu talk the entire time. Yeah. Pray for uh, me. <laughs> yeah, I will pray. I will say this, the entire stage is on a global cycle, so if we do one mistake, our entire rhythm gets messed up, and that's why it's considered the hardest stage in the game. Mm. The, the other reason it's uh, one of the hardest stages in the game is that you actually want to be at uh, two health uh, whenever you actually get to the boss of the stage, and there's a very good reason to that. Uh, you basically want to be at that health because to fight the last boss, if you're at two or less health, or I'm sorry, if you're at uh, less than two health, uh, the boss will not be able to use an attack which makes him go invulnerable, uh, which saves a huge amount of time uh, in the speed run. So right now, Plague Knight is playing through the Explodatorium, which is his home turf in the Shovel Knight campaign. This is the stage you play through, and he's the boss at the end of it. Or is he? Uh, in the Shovel Knight campaign. Correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's a, a terrible thing waiting for me at the end of the stage. No, it'll be great. So we have yeah. $500, though, from Cheesy Bob, who said, all money for Taskbot. Taskbot is love, Taskbot is life. Give your money to Taskbot. So... Right now, you might see our players uh, doing a lot of damage boost. Like I said again, they want to be at a certain health uh, whenever they reach at the end of the stage, and that's, that's really incredibly important. Uh, runs can uh, live or die depending on uh, if that happens or not. Uh, right there, they used an item called Fle uh, uh, Leech Potion, uh, which will allow to um, make the boss fight a lot safer. They have one more extra half health to do the fight with. Oh, crap. I have to take damage? Okay. So I didn't go for Leech Potion because I hit the cycle that I wanted to, so this boss fight is actually incredibly scary depending on what spawn I get. So they're going to try to get hit on the right side. I got the worst spawn. And then they're going to hit him with a bomb and going to try to combo him to the right side with Staff of Striking and then bomb and then just do that over and over again. I got lucky. <laughs> nice. I didn't get any double hits. But nice. nice. Didn't get we didn't die. That's the most important part. Yeah. I don't care about double hits. So an interesting thing about uh, Cluster and Plague Staff that we're using um, is we can get up to four hits in a single frame. It's incredibly rhythmic, uh, dependent on how Shovel Knight's bouncing and how the Cluster hits. But um, 
if you get like perfect timing, you can actually kill him in about four clusters. But we're actually happy just not to die to him because he can really ruin your life. Yeah, and I mean, then the health thing is key to the timing there, right? Because if you if he can use the invulnerability, that fight can get like very long and drawn out. Um, that's why we actually are at if we found out if you're below two HP. Um, he actually doesn't use the phase locket anymore, and that's why we have to take so much damage in the stage. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, for everyone else, um, Shovel Knight fights with his complete arsenal from the original game. So he has the anchor, he has the phase locket, he can even drink Tropel's potion to refill his health. So, as you'd imagine, that's a lot of things going on at once if he is able to have his way with it. For some reason, he also has the Warhorn. We don't know why. Uh, Yep. <laughs> we want it to be like his full, complete arsenal, and the Warhorn is, a, I think, specifically used if he gets into a situation where he's covered by blocks, he'll use it to break out so he can continue the fight, and that way he doesn't get, like, caught in a, a tight spot. Yeah. But yeah, I, I guess uh, it's a new game plus Shovel Knight, right? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Fun fact, um, if you actually have the phase locket, if you collect it in an 8% route, like, if you hold on the relic and you don't turn it in, he will still phase lock it. So there's technically two phase lockets in Shovel Knight lore. That's right. <laughs> uh, and I just got uh, messed around. So this is technically an auto-scroller, but the fish can choose to either accelerate the auto-scroller or delay it. And when he delays it, it actually messes up his chest opening, so hopefully I can still get a decent fight. Yeah, a couple of things I forgot to mention about just uh, New Game Plus in general nice, is that... Got it. Um, if you're playing in New Game Plus, you actually take twice as much damage as uh, you usually do. And there's also uh, basically only two, check, uh, two checkpoints per stage. Uh, one at the middle of the stage and one right before the boss. And this right. is another zip. Uh, just going to interrupt you really fast. Nice. So basically what they did there is that uh, they, did the, they went to a screen blindly without actually loading it. Uh, but even though they went up to the screen blind, there's still the uh, screen transition trigger that's still there that they actually triggered. Yeah, um, so for Plague, uh, the developers added a lot of extra walls to make sure you can't do that. But we found three places where we can do it, so we do it. Those walls were originally set up um, for Shovel Knight. There were a bunch of cheat codes that lets him like, jump really high and have infinite jumps and things like that. Um, and that's why we originally had to start capping that stuff. It worked out pretty well that Plague Knight's mobility was not really a little bit more crazy. Very nice, by the way. Wow, it's so close. <laughs> this race is so close. All right, so coming up are the next two dangerous stages. We have Mole Knight, which uh, we're called the Fleet City because we have three major fleet strats that take up probably 80% of the stage. And then uh, after that, we have Polar, which is incredibly dangerous because there's spikes everywhere. Um, I hate to like probably jinx me in the future, but if we get through these two stages, we're pretty much home free. Uh, propeller stage can still. I th I honestly think propeller's free, so watch me die there. All right, cool. <laughs> propeller next stage, the easiest stage in the game. I think everyone agrees. Oh, uh, whoops. Would we have time for donations? Yes. 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 Perfect. One hundred dollars from Themen Yunus, who said, "I wish both Shovel Knight runners good luck." Sadly, I'll miss the run live, but I'll make sure to watch the race from the archives later on for Chivalry. One hundred dollars from Doker D, who said, "My mom passed away last April. Breast cancer got the best of her after a four-year battle. Here's hoping less people get this oh disease." Oh. Shout out to everyone involved with AGDQ in any way. Keep it up and save the animals. All right, so this is one of the newest fleet strats that we have, where we just go through multiple rooms with very nice uh, double jump timing and fleet timing. This is actually a very—I ah, missed it. Oh. Nice, got Munch I got it. Munch I got it. So that is the Yump. Um, it requires a very, very almost pixel perfect jump to do, and it saves a lot of time. However, because I missed it, we're now synced. For a little bit. Oh, I got. Oh, oh not today, Steve. <laughs> uh, so we call the bird Steve. It's just what we do. 
All right, Mole Knight. Oh, on, you're on keyboard, right? So you can get to that bat really quick. Yeah, I am on keyboard, so I can I can basically switch to any relic I want really fast. It's actually incredibly helpful when I'm really bad at this game. So coming up is the last cutscene where we see Mona uh, until the very end of the game. And because we have to walk all the way up to Mona, it's actually faster to fleet out of the room instead of burst, jump, burst like we have been on every other cutscene. It's just a little tiny frame save. Did we ever explain screw attack? No. Mm, no. I'll, I'll go ahead. Okay. So. Um, they're using, uh, you can customize the, the way your burst works, and they're actually using spin burst. What actually, actually makes your body sort of a, like, uh, like a screw attack, like sort of Samus style. Uh, and that's really useful uh, because it allows you to break through dirt blocks, which uh, very often block your way uh, in a couple of stages. And it's also very useful in, uh, in a couple of situations where you need to burst through enemies as well. That's the hardest screen in this game, or in the stage, I should say. I mess it up constantly. So in this next room, there's two strats. You can use the bat to do a damage boost, and you can use the shore you can to go up. Uh, they actually converge, so it's whatever preference you want to do. Got it. Nice. It's really great seeing all of the relics used in uh, all together like this. This is fantastic. I believe there's only two relics that aren't used uh, in the speedrun, really. There is Berserker's Brew and, well, I think Bait Bomb only gets used once, basically. But yeah, pretty much every relic uh, that Plague Knight has gets some use in the speedrun, which is really cool. I actually did that too fast. Whoops. So this is a room with a set uh, pattern, so if I get through it perfectly fine, I can avoid damage boosting. Oh, I thought I was too slow. And just go straight through the room. Otherwise, you have to do a damage boost, which I tried to go for. And then this is that skip, and I missed it. I got a first try. Nice. So what Taiwan's going to try to do is going to try to take damage oh my God, while he's... Uh, he's going to spawn a vat while he's screw attacking please. through this dragon, and then spawn a vat. And then he'll get damage boosted against the wall, and he will uh, stand on the bed instead. There we go. Like that. Oh man, that's... <laughs> that's ridiculous. Nice kill. Yeah, yeah, you have a chance of dying on that fight if you miss any damage, because then you just fall right onto the spikes. And the last long room is probably the most dangerous yeah, one in the I, game. Yeah, I just kind of... I messed it up, that. too. <laughs> I just kind of went as safe as possible after missing that too many times. Uh, the polar kill is actually pretty free. Um, you just need health to damage boost. So that's why I, I healed there. And I'm stupid. <laughs> nice. So I was actually supposed to damage boost that last snowball to uh, have invincibility frames when he falls down, but I forgot to. Um, I accidentally dodged it on accident. We have. $300 from you, Fabi, who said, so hyped for Shovel Knight. Just had news of a, new f of a few family members and coworkers affected by cancer within the past year or so. This donation is a shout out for them. Let's have our lovely Twitch chat play some Brain Age. I guess we should also explain how we set up the New Game Plus file, because anyone might be wondering why there's still green coins if we already have everything. Right. Oh, right, and also why we're not fighting Black Knight 2. Yeah. Um, so, New Game Plus suffers from the fact that you basically have to set up the file... Oh, whoops. You, sh you have to basically set up the file yourself. Um, and if you do that, you can't do speedrun mode, because speedrun mode in this game is based off your in-game timer, and that continues on into New Game Plus. So we actually have to use a cheat code to enable New Game Plus for us, and that actually disables all map encounters, including Black Knight 2. And the cheat code just doesn't give us the uh, coins for whatever reason. Yeah, so we actually have to make the file, then go in and collect 180 coins so that we get less text boxes from Mona every time. And I guess now would be a good time for some more donations because we both have auto-scrollers, essentially. Yes. Yep. <laughs> uh, 
so next, <laughs> next up uh, we have Tinker Knight. Uh, he's pretty easy. Um, usually a Shovel Knight, you have an item called the Gear, uh, which pretty much instantly kills him. And Plague Knight doesn't have the Gear, so in order to make up for that, uh, Plague Knight just basically does double damage to him. So he's uh, pretty much going to die instantly uh, anyway, even though they don't have the gear. Uh, it's like two clusters and like five or six staff hits. Yeah. Um, oh, and just to explain why we use the loadout that we use, um, I think everyone's probably noticed now, but when we throw a cluster bomb, it does three hits without us throwing any more bombs, and that allows us to combo it with cluster, or Blake Staff and just kill bosses incredibly fast. And then interesting to note is if you jump with Fleet Fast active into boss rooms, you actually get a bit closer to bosses. So certain bosses we want to actually get closer to, and other bosses we want to be in the default location. Nice kill. Yeah, I missed a hit. Okay. So fun fact is at the very bottom, you hold the dance button, which is down. Uh, I'll go left and then right, and then when I need to jump, I'll be perfectly aligned. I was actually not aligned at the beginning, so I'm a liar. I'm just going to shut up now. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. So I do have some questions for the dev team. Uh, since you're here, what were some of your design philosophies with Plague? Um, I think going in, we wanted Plague Knight to be, well, I guess we started at what his boss fight was like, which was he was a very... Um, I guess, frantic character. He jumped around a lot. He like switched locations, and he could throw projectiles. So that was where we started with what we should translate over to the player part of it. And so we wanted it to be something where you could get like a great burst of mobility, uh, hence the burst, I guess. Um, but it maybe felt a little tricky to control at first. Like maybe uh, when you first put hands on the controller, you could do it, but you'd feel like a little scared to do it, or you weren't really sure where he'd end up, or it'd be a little like slightly uh, chaotic but um, to put in a lot of mechanics and items around it that could make it controllable or that could help you learn it over time. So that's where like the VAT comes in, which lets you autocorrect after a fall or a bad hit. Uh, the Shurio can let you get a little bit of extra height, and the bomb throw helps you like stabilize it and kind of come to a nice landing. Um, so I think uh, that level of chaos, chaos is really what we started on. So, so they're going to actually try to go through uh, two, two rooms blind, and Munchuck just got it. That's nice. really cool. Oops. So the problem with doing the setup into that um, is we actually have no more magic. Oh. And Jawas, which we call the flying meanies, because um, <laughs> they look like Jawas from Star Wars. And they are probably the scariest minions or enemies in this game. They can completely ruin your life. Luckily, we have a setup to go through that room 95% of the time. Um, there is a one pattern the very first Jawa can do, and he'll actually blow you straight into a cannonball. And there's nothing you can do because you're out of uh, magic and you can't burst up anymore. There are other setups for the zip that allow you to have magic, but the one we did is basically guaranteed to get the zip, so... It's guaranteed and it's slightly faster. Yeah, these following rooms are, are pretty treacherous if your burst timing is uh, off by any amount. So, oh, sorry, Tolu. Um, I'm actually going to avoid the edge of the screen there because there's a death wall if you rub up against it. Nice. Okay, nice. Some good smoke bomb. Keep in mind that they actually haven't grabbed a checkpoint yet, or at least Muncha hasn't. So he really needs to not die. <laughs> All right, I'm nice. He, he's safer now. So Propellant Knight can actually be hit uh, from the side of his, uh, his hitbox. He needs to hit the very top, and Muncha got the best kill. Nice. nice. Yeah. Oh god, no, 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 no! Ah! I'm alive! No! I'm alive! Ah, yes! Ah. Didn't die! Oh my god. I know I shouldn't have gone for the fleet strat. I hate you, Tolu. <laughs> Tolu made that last one. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Would be alchemists at home having the bat on hand. Got it. And I think, I think, uh, 
progress as, as any other play. You can keep the bat with you on propeller night, on the beast thing where you're afraid of getting knocked away. Just mash that after you get hit, and sometimes you can recover from like a bad situation like that. It was funny because um, Shovel Knight, his collision for being detected by a death pit is more or less like his character height. Um, but once we put in the Plague Knight bursting and his double jump and things like that, we realized that um, having the same collision for Plague Knight would be, uh, feels unfair. Because the moment your toe would touch the death pit, you would get pulled under and we'd be declared dead and like you can't jump out of it. But since Plague Knight has so many recovery mechanics, whether it's the bomb burst or the bat, uh, it would feel like it would happen too early. So Plague Knight actually has a slightly shifted up and smaller death pit collision than Shovel Knight to accommodate for like his recovery mechanics. I was just about to say that and thank you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, uh, it was a selfish thing. We did it because we felt like it was unfair when we were playing. So I'm glad that uh, <laughs> it goes out to everyone like that. But yeah, a small tweak like that had a huge effect. Shovel Knight doesn't have any mechanics like that. Once he's that far into a pit, there's nothing he's gonna do. So it's, uh, yeah, pretty much the same. So coming up next, Mucha's gonna try to uh, go through this crusher section in one go. Nope, didn't uh, get it. Yeah, okay. Oh god, dude, okay. Uh, my jump, my first jump was way too late. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing you actually recognized that you weren't actually getting that early on. That's, that's really cool. So that damage juice was actually unintentional. No. I was looking at Munch's screen and almost died. <laughs> so I'm going I'm to I'm stop screen looking. A my screen that's, yeah. Oop. Uh, yeah. Game? Oh, jeez. So the reason, game? the reason Munch got confused there, perhaps, is because the Staff of Surging, which is the Shoryuken type move that they're using, and the Staff of Striking... What? Um, actually um, have a very similar icon. No, so my, my button actually switched twice, because I play on a PlayStation 4 controller, and they have a chance to double swap. Right. So I almost bonked on those uh, spikes, but luckily I got through. I got a bad chandelier cycle. Ooh, I'm, just almost, I'm just almost dying this entire run. So yeah, I'm gonna shut up now. Gold, though, so that's great. Yes, I got gold. Mission accomplished. We'll need bank. that for the retirement fund. <laughs> we have a hundred dollar anonymous donation. Love Shovel Knight. Feels good, man. I right, do too. <laughs> so um, oh, oh what? Okay. That was neat. Never done that before. <laughs> so for Black Knight, they're gonna try to do a similar thing that they did for the first one, just these bomb combos and staff strikes. Oh, oh. man. That's the one thing you don't want him to do. You never want him to do missiles because uh. it wastes at least eight seconds whenever he does it. And if you can, you want to avoid him actually uh, sp uh, sprouting wings, which Muncha did very nice. Mm. I did not get it, sadly. So I have to do it the really, really slow way. What a jerk. Luckily, when he does have wings, you can. There's no more invulnerability frames on him, so you can just hit him as much as possible. So you only end up losing around 10 seconds compared to a quick kill. Still not ideal. So what coming up, Munch is going to do what a, a fleet strat. So fleet negates the floatiness of the water somewhat, and you actually fall faster. It's about two seconds uh, time save to do that strat. Also, guys, uh, you didn't. You put, forgot to put spikes there. Yeah, you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So we're gonna intentionally take either one hit or two hits of damage on this stage, uh, just so we can do a safety leech potion later on. Yes. Uh, uh, so <laughs> because um, our very f our, our our favorite friend. Um, worst night. Worst night. Yes. Worst night. Uh, is the final boss of this stage. Um, and if you remember him from Explodatorium, we need a very specific HP amount. So we have to actually do the boss rush um, while taking damage against all the other bosses to avoid getting uh, phase lockets for Shovel Knight. <laughs> so boss oh, rush man. is actually the scariest point of this game. Yeah. Uh, one thing to note, they're actually running on the patch, I believe, 2.01. And in that version, uh, every time in the boss rush, they get a plate. Um, there's a bomb in it, which is actually 
really useful that it's not health because you can actually hit uh, bosses for like a pretty good amount of damage with them. And also, you actually want to avoid health uh, in the boss rush uh, for the reason that Taiwan stated. You have, want to actually want to fight Shovel Knight at low health again. All right. And so now, since we're just finishing up an auto scroller, it's a perfect time for donations. <laughs> perfect. Fifteen dollars from Essentia. She says, "My girl, say hi, Uncle Brosentia." Cool. Hi, kiddos. Twenty-five dollars from Ramination. The animals teach you how to wall jump and run fast and are fluffy, and would you let them die for shame? Save those animals. But they're tasty. Agreed. $100 from Alucard47 who says, a taskbot incentive that has been met. I, for one, support and greet our robot overlords. So the reason why we, we throw a bomb before we fall in is if you actually have Fleet Flask active when you enter this room, uh, the game soft locks. That was fixed in the new patch, but in this one it's still a thing. Oh, missed the bomb. So for the most part, the bosses are pretty much the same. Uh, some bosses are a bit more difficult because their um, their quick kill depends on them spawning at a certain location. Uh, Polar Knight's uh, pretty fine, but the biggest problems, I believe, are Propeller Knight and, uh, to some extent, King Knight. But uh, Propeller Knight is the big one that can cause you a lot of headaches. I actually didn't want to take damage there. All right, this is my third boss. So if you do too much damage to Mole Knight, he turns into Speedy Gonzalez and just zips across the screen. So if you just saw Muncha, uh, that was the sort of thing I was talking about with the bomb. Uh, you wouldn't be able to normally kill Tinker Knight that fast if uh, there weren't like pretty much uh, every single, if every platter didn't have a bomb in them. There was only, you only get one health pickup, I believe, uh, in this version of the game. Uh, that's the one that you just got. So I want not Propeller Knight. Thank you. Die, please. Thank you. healed so much because I, if he hits you with that attack where he makes the wind tunnel, it does six full damage. So I was at half an HP, so I'm smart. Awkward. But luckily I didn't die. Yeah, unfortunately Muncha I don't think is going to be able to get a, a quick Shovel Knight kill, but uh, he's not dead, so that's pretty good. You really don't want to die on the boss rush. This is the worst uh, Tinker fight I've ever done in my life. I need one damage. Thank No, come on. Thank you. So, like Shovel Knight, the bosses here are mostly a random order, which I think uh, can make the HP management for the final boss a little tricky. Oh, crap. Actually, <laughs> Munch was fine. You got enough health to uh, do the quick um, kill. Please, please, thank you. Uh oh. Munch, Munch is fine. He has uh, enough uh, here, health buddy. tonics as backup. Oi! Yeah, uh, whereas Shovel Knight can drink an entire travel chalice to get health back, Plague Knight picks up uh, health tonics along the way. And you could use those very nice. Nice! Oh, nice. oh I hate boss rush. Nice <laughs> Good job, dude. This is the, the most stress-inducing part of the run. <laughs> oh, it's so neck and neck still. <laughs> yeah. This so, is going to be a, yeah, a great finale. <laughs> Let's hope we don't get the glitch on the last boss. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Whether we don't die, I also we change that. Whatever, whatever that glitch is, I definitely hope that. So, for some reason, we actually have to time our pushes here. Uh, if you can actually pause the entire cinematic. Only cutscene in the game like that. Yeah. Please fix. I believe. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I know why that would be. <laughs> All right, so coming up in about two screens on much of the screen, we have a fleet strat 
that is literally free, and it looks like it shouldn't work at all. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that and let you see what it actually is. I think I know where this is going. <laughs> I play Ignite. Oh, hands. Oh, I lost my fleet. You have to jump once or you will bonk on the last bit. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> luck in Plague in the Plague update, those blocks, sometimes you could fall through them, but they hard-coded them to always pick you up. So we can just fleet across them and then just basically levitate across. So they want to get her to uh, two health left whenever she uh, starts dives. Uh, that three health is still pretty good. Okay, she only has uh, one damage left. Got it. Oh. Oh, man. I got really lucky on my dives. Yes! Nice. <laughs> so coming up, we have uh, the next to Shovel Knight and Black Knight, the dumbest fight in the game, because he's you. Spoilers. Uh, you actually fight Plague Knight next, and he's completely random. Uh, we, there's a way to get enough damage to him early on to make the fight kind of fast, but it's dependent on what kind of cycle he gives you. So this is anyone's race, honestly. This can make or break anything. All right, good start for Taiwan. Come back here. Nice. Got him. All right. That was pretty good. Keep going. All right. So if I don't get the glitch at the end. So the glitch is uh, you can actually hurt the final boss's bottom half uh, with the uh, Plague Staff, which makes the fight go really, really fast. Unluckily enough, um, sometimes Plague Staff just doesn't work. So hopefully this works out just fine. And time is uh, last hit on this boss. Yes. We will call it. But get ready. Oh, he's being mean. Time, time. Nice. Woo. Nice. <laughs> time. nice. nice. Nicely done. Dude, that was a good race. <laughs> that was actually really That's good. That's the closest really race we've ever had. <laughs> it was down to Shadow Plague, honestly. Yeah. That was it. Um, can we know what time was, by chance? All right. Time. That's good. Uh, that's that's sort of cool. two minutes off the world record, but for, uh, for a marathon, that was actually really good. Especially because I almost died, like, Let's ten times. Let's credits here real quick. <laughs> Only one more thing I want to show before we leave. I, wait, did you skip it? No. Oh, it's right well, here. oh I want to show what I want to show. So, oh. um, the storyline of Plague, outside of uh, being starting a Baz fan club underneath this, the village, <laughs> is that uh, Plague Knight wants to get a potion to basically ask Mona out. But Mona believes that he wants to ask the magistrate out, who actually sells you health tonics and stuff. So the, a nice, funny thing that they threw in is that the, the magistrate is like, um, I know you like me, but I, I want a real man. And so she goes for Percy, who's not a man. He is a horse man. <laughs> The implications. <laughs> the only other thing I want to show off, go way down here to special thanks, all the way at the end. Come on. It's almost there. There, there we is. are. <laughs> so. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that was uh, Shovel Knight. I don't think anyone died. Nope. That's yeah. actually really good. Yeah. Yeah. And That's kind of a miracle, actually. That <laughs> is a miracle. So, and then the ending credits is just uh, a nice dance because Plague Knight finally asked Mona out. It's adorable. But that is uh, Plague Knight New Game Plus. Yeah. Thanks for letting us race. What a fantastic run. That was absolutely amazing. Really a big comeback right towards the end as well. It was awesome seeing both of you 
really, really close throughout. We have $150 from Zachary Brimstead, who said everything about S Shovel Knight is incredible. Good luck to the runners, and remember, justice in space, unless you're Samus, in which case, kill the animals. We also have, let me see, it's somewhere here, the $500 donation from Snortimer Monster. He said, in addition to this donation, I'm supporting the AGDQ staff by sending over a bunch of pizzas. My wife is a two-time cancer survivor.